Today in the Smuggler's Room, we're rolling out a tool that I have never used, and I don't plan on using it today either, because this is the way, and that's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is taking you through part two of our Mandalorian build series. And let's face it, it's not gonna be me that's taking us through this, because if I got my hands on the sewing machine, I would take it all apart and pull out all the greeblies. That's not really allowed in this house. So, my partner in crime, my beautiful wife, she is gonna take us through the patterns, the threads, the cutting of the stuff and putting st st things I really don't know how to do or can't even explain to you. So let's get going. My wonderful mom used to sew clothes and Halloween costumes for my brother and I when we were kids. She taught me how to use her sewing machine and I recall making the infamous scrunchies that were worn through the 80s and what would now be super geeky jumpsuits. There was a lot of time in between the scrunchy era to when I picked up sewing again when I got my own machine for our wedding and you'll never guess what sewing I did most. Halloween costumes! Only a few times have I created my own patterns, and when I did, it took me quite a bit of extra time. So typically, I like to find a pre-made pattern that I can build from. I actually like to lay out each and every pattern on the fabric before making any cuts to make sure that I've arranged them correctly per the pattern map and that I won't run out of fabric. Utilizing those as a basis will make alterations and additions so that we can get the detail we've envisioned for our Mando costumes. Now don't worry, we will be creating some patterns of our own, but for the base pieces, we're lucky enough that sci-fi is popular and you can find patterns in-universe at fabric stores. Your machine's manual is going to be your best friend. It'll have step-by-step -step visuals of how to thread your machine, sewing settings for stitch width, length, and tension, as well as troubleshooting and recommendations to what type of needle you might want to use for the fabric you've chosen. Before I start sewing the costume pieces together, I'll always do tests of the stitch settings with each and every different fabric combination or stitch type that I'm planning on using. The top that I've sewn for myself thus far has a lot of work to go. I unfortunately didn't think through some of the detailing that I would want ahead of time, and now we'll need to figure out how to add those before stitching the rest of the top together. I like to use simplicity patterns because they're just that, simple. Their patterns are straightforward and their step-by-step -step instructions are spelled out for you. It's important to determine before you cut fabric where you may need to lengthen, shorten, or make larger the pattern you're working from before you pin and cut. When Brian and I first started talking about these costumes, we determined that we wanted to do the most we could to keep things light, comfortable, and manageable. Having said that, we're doing our jumpsuits in two pieces instead of one. Because you know, getting in and out of this costume, especially in the middle of a show, to go to the bathroom after drinking a whole lot of Jawa juice, forget about it.
an important step to take before you start sewing patterns together is transferring pattern markings to the wrong side of the fabric. I use a pen or a pencil a lot of times just to do this. I do also use, though, Taylor's chalk and fabric markers. These are washable and actually made for fabric. So for Brian's jumpsuit top, the pattern I found is a size too small. So I actually had to enlarge the pieces utilizing the smaller size lines to determine the next size up. I wanted to use some of the uncommon stitches that my machine has. I've never really used these settings before, so I was super excited to figure it out. This pattern calls for a hook and loop tape, which essentially is Velcro, but we really want to make sure that this costume is secure on us while we're wearing it for a whole entire day. So I chose to do a zipper. Most sewing machines come with some accessories, and typically one of those will be a zipper foot. <laughs> They're super cool. You can see the difference between the two here. The zipper foot will hug the zipper closely while sewing to get the stitch as close to the zipper as possible. The sleeve that came with this pattern is pretty basic. You all know that there is more to the Mando sleeve, so I altered our pattern to fold to create the look of a two-layer sleeve while adding some additional detailing that I took inspiration from the Mandalorian sleeve stitching. Being that we're both tall, we wanted to make sure that the sleeves are not finished too short. I made Brian put it on and raise his arm to mark the spot at its longest. We actually did decide to use store-bought cargo pants. They're so comfy and look right. We decided to alter them to fit our Mando designs. Mm -hmm. 
we wanted to add bigger pockets that are more in-universe for Mandalorians. And we're going to integrate fabrics that are on other components so that the pants, even though we didn't sew them, will be cohesive with the rest of the costume. I used a good amount of bumwad to create the pattern and get it right. Sorry trees, but like they say in the shop, measure twice, cut once. Or like here, measure five times, cut once. are fun details to add to costumes and actually really easy to attach. Most come in a kit and has the little metal pieces in the kit itself. The flak vest is pretty simple. The stitching is what makes it so cool. For this, I actually reused the same pattern from the jumpsuit top, but made only two pieces, a front and a back, and altered the sleeves to be the recognizable Mando cap sleeve. The Mando flak vest seems to have some thickness to it, but again, we didn't want to die of heat while wearing these, so the stitching detail actually gives the illusion of that thickness in the top. I'm using a lighter color fabric for this with the same gray thread that I used on the jumpsuit. It gives a really subtle contrast that lets the thread stand out a little from the vest. I've been using a lot of the double stitch on these pieces. I feel it adds just a little more to the finished look. On the cap sleeve, I did add interfacing to give it more stiffness than the shirt. And then, Bob's your uncle. The fabric will have more structure to it. We're pretty happy with the outcome so far, but of course I had ambitions to have a lot more pieces done. But we wanna make sure we're thinking this costume through that we are completely happy with all of it when it's complete. That was a lot. 
I, I get it. And we're sure that it was a lot to take in and try to figure out and piece together. But I'm really excited to sit down myself at that machine and just start, you know, do some sewing and stuff. And we hope that what we did really brought some great value to you and that you were able to see at least in part how we're putting things together and starting to assemble it. Now, if you've never sewed before, our suggestion would be that you go out there and you find some sewing tutorials, some things to get you started. And then a lot of what we showed today will actually make sense and you can utilize it in your costume build, whatever that might be. Now, for the rest of this Mando project, there is still additional soft parts to put together. There's armor to build, there are trinkets, there are helmets, there are weapons, and we're really excited for all of it. And we can't wait to share it with you. But that'll have to wait till the next time we build something out of nothing.